Moon Knight episode two. It's here. It's out. We watched it. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited, you guys, to talk spoilers. Welcome back. I'm Mia, and we're here to talk about our weekly discussion about Moon Knight from Marvel Studios on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm beginning this episode today, but oh my gosh. I really, really enjoyed this movie. Marvel has come back strong once again. You know, I said I had some problems with the first episode in my last video, but I think everything got remedied in this one because they finally cut to the chase. We're finally getting a lot of answers and um, my gosh, it's just been really spectacular. So I'm ready to get into the discussion. Again, we are talking spoilers for Moon Knight episode two. So come back when you've watched it or if you already have, let's stick around and let's get to the first point because I want to talk about this whole thing about becoming the Moon Knight or becoming the servant of Khonshu, the, the Egyptian moon god, right? Um, so we, we get some interesting discoveries here. Like, um, first of all, we understand now that Stephen slash Mark is an avatar of Khonshu, the moon god, and that's an interesting concept. So it's kind of like you're essentially a human being doing their bidding because his bidding needs to be done. <laughs> I think that's the best way to describe it. Like, you know, Mark, we know, made this deal with Khonshu for some reason. And this is where the questions arise because y'all know last week I was still caught up in like, okay, you know, who came first, the Steven or the Mark? Or, you know, why are they, you know, all sharing this body, including in a way Khonshu as well. And that still kind of got me, you know, got my brain rumbling because, okay, so we 100% we know for a fact <laughs> that Mark is the one who made the deal with Kanshu to be the avatar for, you know, the Moon Knight Guardian, essentially, or just to be, you know, a human walking Kanshu. Because um, as we saw in the scene where Steve was having dinner with Arthur, he was like, oh, you know, he can't do anything to harm you or, you know, he can't, he can only kind of scare you and, and cause up a ruckus. He can't actually do anything to you or to anyone. So that's why we understand that he needs a body, a vessel, an avatar to be able to, you know, have the things that he wants to do actually happen. And from that scene, we also find out that Arthur was also once an avatar of Khonshu. And so it's like, okay, <laughs> what's his deal? Why, you know, why would he go and, and make that deal? Because I'm assuming it's not just like, you are the chosen one, right? Like, hey, you're next. I feel like you have to it's a deal right and then it's like if so what would be the purpose of making that deal in the first place like okay you know moon god comes up knocks on my door and says hey uh i need to do some bidding but i need you to help me do the bidding because i can't do it myself and so i'm like i've got nothing better to do so maybe i would say yes <laughs> But for someone like Mark, you know, is it going to be because he has this motive of like, you know, he's this mercenary and he's like, okay, well, if I get these powers, um, it's going to help me out. And, you know, I guess I can help you out as well. Um, that's where I could see it coming in, you know, like there's got to be a reason why you're like, hey, moon god, you know, come on in. right? <laughs> and I'm sure at a point that's how Arthur felt as well. He probably had something that he really, really wanted to do. And maybe it lines up with his you know, current goals of balancing out the universe. And then he was like, eh, you know, I don't, I don't really, we don't see eye to eye, <laughs> you and I. Uh, and so then that also has me wondering what happens to Layla because Kanchu had kind of indicated like, hey, well, you know, this is your last mission, dude. I'll let you go, you, you know, free to roam in the pasture and then, but I'm going to Layla next. And the way that it, you know, shakes uh, Mark, he's like, you know, you, you can't, you know, you obviously clearly he doesn't want that to happen to his wife <laughs> as we find out. So then it makes me wonder, it's like, okay, is it a non-negotiable deal where, you know, Kanchu comes and he's like, hey, I need you, or I'm assuming you have to say yes. And Mark is just assuming that Layla would be like, yeah, dope. I want some Moon Knight powers. <laughs> so yeah, that leads me to wonder, like first, obviously, is Mark gonna allow this to be his last mission? Is he gonna like, you know, allow the, the Moon God to leave him and take away the powers? And then if that were to happen, will Layla 
accept the powers. I mean, I don't know. That's kind of a bold move. And then, okay, going back to that first point, then it also makes me wonder, okay, when it's all over, what happens to Steven slash Mark? Because we know that, okay, Mark has a wife, he's got a passport, he's got this whole life that's happened. And I'm going back to the first thought that I had last week. It's like, okay, well, which one came first? And I'm assuming, I guess my, th if I could make a theory is that Mark always kind of had the split personality disorder, but maybe you know, he was able to keep a hold on Steven. Now, I don't know how his wife never knew. That is a whole nother subject, but it's possible maybe when Kanchu came to him and gave him the powers, it just, you know, augmented that to the point where, you know, he's actually blacking out and Steven is now living this full life. Um, <laughs> It really makes me wonder and it's like, okay, again, if he's gonna relinquish these powers, you know, say, okay, I, I don't want them anymore after this mission, then what happens? Who goes away? Who who gets to be in the back seat? Uh, because Steven is really like, I just want my life back, please. I want my life back. <laughs> and and Mark is kind of just like, I don't know, he, he seems kind of done with it all anyway. If he is in the back seat, you know, I, I don't think he would mind. So also really quick, I wanted to talk about Layla because we finally got some info on her. Um, like I said, she is Mark's wife and she is also kind of a mercenary or has been doing, you know, kind of the same type of crazy things that he's been doing. And so we, we see that throughout this, that she's, she's pretty cool. Uh, but it, it, it leads me to wonder, okay, what happens to her after all this? Again, it's like, okay, one, you know, she can become the Moon Knight and then, or two, you know, there's this other possibility of her, like, who does she choose? Cause I don't know, it kind of seemed like, you know, Steven ain't great with the ladies, but he does love some Layla, you know, <laughs> they got the same favorite poet and, you know, it was just kind of cute when he was like, she was like, here's the divorce papers and I need you to sign. He's like, I would never divorce you. And I was like, oh, that's, you know, Mark would never. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. But I mean, hey, maybe she gets two husbands for one. That's a great deal. I don't know why that's something that came out of my mouth. I mean, two Oscar Isaacs for one. Oh my gosh, so speaking of Oscar Isaac, can we talk about actually my most favorite scene um, in this, which is the most wonderful cinematic shot I've ever seen. It is beautiful, it is wonderful, it is the eighth wonder of the world. It is the, the backside, backside of, of Oscar Isaac, ladies and gentlemen. That tops it all. I know usually guys in the MCU are like, you know, gonna get their their full frontal up front shot. <laughs> they get their shirtless shot. <laughs> but you know the, the 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 cinematographer in this was like, I want to be different. I want to express something that we have not yet seen in the MCU or at least that often. And they were like, we're gonna do a full on back shot and you know i have to say it i have to say this in every video i have to mention the batman it's kind of exactly what we got in the batman and i really i love the way the cinematography is going <sighs> now talk about my second favorite scene which is probably less important and probably not as cool as you know looking at oscar isaac's back you know but um i would just say that the shot um or the scene after the jackal or whatever the heck hound is coming after steven and <laughs> Steven and Layla and she's like put on the suit do the suit do the suit and then you know he's like da, 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 da. he finally finds the will to manifest himself a suit but it's not the Moon Knight suit it's essentially the the Mr. Knight suit it, it's really dapper it's really cool but I just thought that was cute like oh look Steven is trying and he's trying to be confident now granted you know sure it's it's more than likely because he's afraid of Mark taking over but I mean it was cute, you know, there was an attempt. And also I, I gotta tack on as well the scene just after that where Mark takes over finally and they just kind of have this heart to heart about what's gonna happen, what do I do, you know, who's gonna be in the front seat, who's in the back seat. And I just thought that was really 
well done. I don't have much to say about that, but I just kind of really enjoyed that. And it really fleshes out both of their characters. So that leads us to the big question about what comes next, because as hinted in the Oscar Isaac um, scene of his back, uh, <laughs> we head on over to Egypt. And now it's like, we kind of have to do this big confrontation about, you know, we find out that Arthur needs the beetle because it's a compass and the compass will lead to Amit's, uh, the, you know, the crocodile gods <laughs> tomb. And then what he's going to do is he's going to resurrect her. And then I guess her judgment can be exacted upon the whole world, just as, you know, just as everyone wants. I did love the whole moral conundrum thing that uh, Steven brought up. He's like, okay, but if you, you know, exacting judgment before it happens, does it really happen? And if you're going to kill a child, why would you kill a child? It's just an innocent child. And I'm like, yeah, he's got a point. You know, it's like the would you kill baby Hitler sort of thing. Like, hey, it might happen. It might not happen. But, you know, Arthur is like, you know, a child may die and that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. But yeah, that just leads me to wonder because, okay, now we're going into episode three, which is halfway through the series. And it's like, now we're in Egypt and there's still going to be three, you know, we've got to make it to six episodes. So with them being in Egypt now, I'm interested to see how they're going to carry out the plot and basically either stall Arthur from finding the tomb or, you know, maybe one whole episode is just going to be them trying to, you know, Tomb Raider back and forth between who can find it first or I yeah, I don't quite know, you know, where this is going to go. And I think it, it's, it's still an exciting narrative to tell. And I'm excited that they are in Egypt because I was really hoping for that to happen. And um, yeah, I think Marvel Studios is really, they're, they're, they're building up something great. So I got to commend them. My God. <laughs> So I am gonna leave it there, guys. I hope you enjoyed this weekly discussion. Next week, my video will 100% be late because I'm going on spring break. So the video probably won't even come out to the following weekend when episode three airs, but it's cool. Come back, you're gonna be waiting for it, I'm pretty sure. In the meantime, folks, if you love Marvel, you gotta check out my Morbius review over here in the link. <laughs> it is quite something. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe for more Marvel content, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.